Welcome, welcome to Code Tober once again. This time I wanted to get your attention on this, but before we start, remember datawave.mulesoft.com. This is a landing page for Datawave, and I'm checking Stack Overflow stuff. You can also join the Slack workspace or check out the GitHub repo to raise issues and such. Um, so I saw this one and I'm not going to go through the whole requirement because it's very use case specific, but the code that Jorge created here, I thought it was very nice and interesting. And again, I'm not going to go through like the whole thing to create the, I don't know, to change the formatting and stuff. But I, I do want to go through the variables that Jorge created. So I have here all the variables and I wanted to show you this. So there are different ways to create random numbers that I kind of already knew about them, but I hadn't actually seen them all like this. So I really wanted to show you that. Um, for example, you can use random int and you can generate a number, uh, like any number before this one, I believe. I think this is a limit. So you can just use random int um, and use, for example, two, and you will get a number between zero and two, but excluding two. So as you can see, we're getting zero, one, zero, one. Um, I can also put like 10 and we will get numbers between zero and nine, I guess, because 10 is not really included. But yeah, you get the feeling. So this person just needed to have the specific format. So that's why uh, this number was added here in random one. This is one way to create a random number for the, the kind of format that this person needed. Um, then another random strategy is to use now as number. So if I put now only, this will give me um, like the date, today's date, and specifically like the time and date that is right now, including milliseconds um, and time zone. So if I keep, for example, refreshing this, you will keep seeing that this will keep changing. Now we are at second 30 and millisecond 900. And then I can just do something else and it will refresh. Uh, I can just click here actually. <laughs> so as you can see, it will keep just refreshing, right? Counting the seconds and the milliseconds and everything. So what this person needed was a format of just numbers as we saw with grant one. And how to do that is that you can coerce this as number and you will end up with something like this, which is also called epoch time, I think. Um, if you are familiar with this format, epoch, this is how you create it now as number. Now, other way that I am seeing here is using the U UUID function, which, oops, which will create a UUID, but this will be a string with this format, right? If you are familiar with UUIDs, this is how they look like. And again, we just wanted the numbers. We didn't want anything else. So what Jorge did was to use the replace function to remove all the numbers and the dashes. And you will end up, oh, sorry. And you will end up with something like this. Although this is a string, you can also just say as number, and this will be why are you not? Well, um, what if I do this? Mm, as number. Yeah, it works. 
If you're not familiar with the then function, it's basically instead of surrounding everything in parentheses, I'm just adding then. But uh, if it makes you feel better, okay, I will do it the other way. Like this and like this. The same thing. I'm just surrounding everything in parentheses, putting as numbers, as number, sorry. Or I'm just keeping then and then using the dollar sign syntax to refer to this whole thing, the output of this whole thing, and then putting it as number. So yes, um, you can also take that and put it as number. Uh, Jorge didn't do it like that. So they're getting a warning here. Auto coercing type from string to number because we're using um, the multiplier operation operator. But I mean, you can also just do that here to stop getting that warning. Then as number. And you can stop getting the warning. And you will also get a number here. Yeah. And then what Jorge is doing here with the second random number is first multiplying epoch plus uh, times UUID numbers. So this variable times this variable. And we end up with like this huge number. But then we are using the module modulo i think it's called function to do this and kind of like got it down a bit um yeah returns the modulo or the remainder after dividing the dividend by the divisor so we're basically dividing this number by this and returning the modulo um, but yeah, like you can just continue doing, I guess, mathematical operations here to get like different results. But the thing that I wanted to show is that you can create random numbers from random int. Um, you can create epoch uh, format numbers, I don't know, using now as number. And you can also use, oh my God, stop doing that, UUID um, and just replace all um, letters and dashes or just like remove them and you can also have more random numbers like that or you can also do mathematical operations like this one and finally we end up with this order number which is basically just taking run two or run one whichever as string and formatting like this i don't know why the format is necessary though can't we just do this Oh, well, I guess in case there are more numbers, it will like kind of cut it down, I guess. Well, I don't see more numbers coming. Oh yeah, here it is. So yeah, um, this is basically just formatting to have all of the numbers. So like if, for example, there is one, if it were like that, then it would add a zero at the end to always have the same amount of digits basically and yeah Jorge said you can try with rand one or rand two but both will create collides at some point that's just life but there you go there are some functions that you can use to create random numbers um i will leave all of these links in the description and i will see you in the next video i sound so much like markiplier <laughs> all right bye Thank <laughs> you.